Hi, this is Dennis Sergeant. I'm here to talk to you about the Get a Grip model for team alignment. It's an opportunity for us to think about how we align the team interactions using the aim, the goals, the roles and responsibilities, as well as the interpersonal relations and processes of the team. The model is pretty simple. It's in essence a form that we start using to align our many decisions by the team. We use individual team member answers to align the team interactions and decisions. And we use this form to simply score every person's thinking on where we're at or where they're at with respect to these critical areas. We use the Get a Grip model to improve and diagnose team effectiveness in written surveys initially. After lots of practice, we have an opportunity to move to more informal use of the tool because once we've gotten familiar with on the, the spot voting, we can show our hands in team meetings and this works even in the virtual world. It is very hierarchical with the aim and the goals and the roles questions guiding and directing our thinking as we then talk about and score the interpersonal relationships and the team processes. We found that with communications and agreement on these critical areas that are part of the Get a Grip model, that the relationships of team members and team processes can be much more effective. A very valid question is why do we use the Get a Grip model? And it's because it helps us link team member thinking as individuals to the charter and the dialogue and the decisions as well as to team goals. It's a way for us to align multiple goals, decisions, and actions by the teams. And with practice, we can speed the decision-making in action. And of course, the action with knowledge leads to improvement and learning. We use the model, especially at the start of the team. We start by discussing the aim in the charter. We set up the goals. We then try to identify the various work roles and identify the communications and personal interactions that are necessary to help the team move and make progress towards the aim. Finally, we focus on the defined team processes, however the team defines them. And then we work systematically through the stages of team development to help people cooperate using the Get a Grip model. It helps us develop agreements and norms for the team as they move from forming, storming, into the norming stages and ultimately into the performing stage of team development. It's important to help us align the why, the what, the who, the how, and the when with our team aim. The aim and purpose is where we start in the Get a Grip model. It's why the team exists and why the team was chartered. Individual members can use the tool and answer, for example, these two fairly fundamental questions. What are we trying to accomplish in the long term aim is clear. They get a chance to take that statement and say, I agree or I disagree. I strongly disagree or I strongly agree. And in essence, each member answers that question and the next, which is the statement that the aim in the team charter is understood and used by the team and the sponsors support the aim. Again, they get a chance on that scale of one to five to self-assess. And then the team discusses where each member agrees or disagrees. And we only move forward when the team's score is agree or strongly agree. And if we have disagreements, we have to get them resolved before we move on. The next stage is to talk about the goals. It's what we say will improve and then identify the work roles of who will do the work to reach that goal. And it's not just that it's one person. Sometimes it'll be all of the team. But the individual members use the tool and answer this clear question with a score. The goals are clear and people are committed to the team. They self-assess on the same five-point scale. And after everybody's made their assessment, the team discusses where they agree or disagree. 
The team moves forward when the team scores agree or strongly agree, and they resolve disagreements to move on. If any member of the team is not agree or strongly agree, then we obviously have a gap we had to address. The roles and responsibilities section of the GRIP model are very important because who performs the work is critical for success of the team. You can see the design team roles that are listed here, and your team may decide to use other roles, but it's important for individual members to use the tool and answer these four very critical questions and to score where they're at on the scale of agree or disagree. The work is organized in a way which clearly leads to accomplishing team goals. Score that. Then score the question. There's maximum use of the different resources of people on the team. Then score. Everyone is clear about what responsibilities they have and the jobs they should do. And last, score on this challenge. The leadership is shared. Once the team has agreement or strong agreement, we move on and we don't move on until all disagreements are resolved. With respect to interpersonal relations, we use the same methodology. Again, it's on a scale of one to five from strongly disagree to strongly agree. We ask every individual team member to use the tool and answer. There's trust and openness in communications and relationships. Time is taken to examine processes between people in order to improve the way we work. And flexibility, creativity, and sensitivity to the need of others are encouraged. After we have a discussion about where we're at individually, we move forward when the team average is agree or strongly agree. Last, we move on to processes, and we ask especially for the PDSA cycles that the team needs to run in order to learn and improve, we ask these questions about decisions and conflict. The statements to score, on again, the score of strongly disagree to strongly agree, are decisions are made based on who has the expertise and the best information, not on hierarchy or authority, and then we score conflict on the team is confronted openly and constructively. After every individual self-assesses, we have a discussion. And when the team score is agree or strongly agree, we move forward. Once a team has gotten highly skilled at using the form, it's very possible to migrate to using your hands. And it's simple once people have gotten the discipline down using the form to be able to call, can I get a grip on this and ask for a show of hands. There are five good reasons to use the get a grip model. First, it helps link team member thinking and action to the team goals and the aim. Second of all, it's a way to align multiple goals, decisions, and actions by design teams. With practice, you can speed decision-making and action, and you can agree on direction, goals, roles, responsibilities, and all the aspects of the get a grip model. And action with knowledge leads to improvement in learning, and all of these lead to improved team alignment and better results. I want to thank you for your kind attention and hope that we've helped you think through the use of the Get a Grip tool. And I'll be delighted to handle any questions, any inquiries at either email or at my phone number that's listed here. Thank you very much for your kind attention.